Thank you very much. The next item of business is a statement by Fiona Hislop on Ferguson Marine, an update. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement, and so there should be no interventions or interruptions. And I call on Fiona Hislop. Presiding Officer, I would like to make a statement on progress at Ferguson Marine Shipyard, Port Glasgow. In response to the COVID pandemic and to protect public health, Ferguson Marine implemented robust measures and delivered a managed shutdown of the yard on the 27th of March 2020. This involved a move to home working where possible. In line with Scottish Government guidelines, Ferguson Marine be began the site preparation phase of restart during the week of the 1st of June. The yard resumed outdoor working on the 8th of June. The launch of the air cushion barge was used to pilot physical distancing controls with a team of 32 people. Work on the ferries resumed on the 29th of June with a similar sized team. The team has since been increased using staggered start times to around 130 people. This is approximately 50% of the workforce. The team is supported by a skeleton crew of supervision and technical staff with other employees working from home where possible. Whilst no work was possible at the yard, uh, extensive work was being done from employees' homes. <coughs> notably on design, where the Ferguson team is working closely with engineers from International Contract Engineering on the detailed design of the ferries. This work continues. Critical projects to turn around the business also continue to progress. These include finance and budgeting systems, implementation of the materials requirements planning system and the new quality management system, all of which are making good progress. COVID-19 safety measures, which allowed a return to work at the yard, could only be implemented with trade union support. And I am pleased to record that the trade unions were happy to agree that robust safety standards were in place. Nonetheless, all employees who can work from home will continue to do so unless they have been specifically identified as essential to be on site. I recognise the disproportionate impact that COVID-19 has had on Greenock and Inverclyde. I am committed to ensuring that all decisions on the Ferguson Marine restart take account not only of the need to keep the workforce safe, but also the needs of the wider region. I also recognise the importance of the 350 jobs that Ferguson provides, jobs that are essential to Inverclyde. Across Scotland, Ferguson supports a further 350 jobs through its supply chain, a total of 700 jobs. Critical amongst these are the 26 apprentice opportunities the Yard offers. Critical for the youngsters themselves, but also critical to the future of shipbuilding at Ferguson's and in Scotland. The Yard has done everything possible to limit the impact of this closure on the delivery of the two Scottish Government funded ferries under construction. Significant progress has been made in planning and design and projects underpinning the turnaround of the business. On progress on 801 and 802, I'm pleased to report that despite the COVID emergency, the Glen Sannox entered dry dock on the 10th of August. The vessel had very heavy marine growth on the hull due to the time spent at the quayside. And I can report that 42 tonnes of mussels were removed from the hull of the vessel. A major risk factor was the condition of the hull paintwork. Despite the heavy marine growth, a joint survey with the owners concluded the paintwork is in good condition. The main work for the dry dock has now commenced. The bulbous bow has been removed and replaced, and the starboard door is being installed. Uh, today, I'm pleased to be able to place before Parliament an updated report on the schedule for delivery and associated cost. To date, the COVID response has left the yard either closed or on restricted working for nearly six months. The estimated cost related to the COVID lockdown is £3.3 million, and this will be treated as an exceptional item and not a project cost. This cost compromises £1.6 million of payroll costs, i.e. staff wages, and £1.7 million of facility costs, effectively the cost of the yard. The cost of the project to deliver the ferries is unchanged at £110.3 million. Within this envelope, there has been an increase in the cost of electrical installation. This has been offset by savings elsewhere and a reduction in the contingency. 
The delivery of the Glen Sanex is now planned for a date in the range of April 2022 to June 2022. The delivery of 802 is now planned for December 22 to February 2023. Beyond the work on the vessels, there has been significant progress building a more robust business at the yard. Good progress has been made in rebuilding the morale of the workforce. Communications with the workforce have improved. There has never been any question about the quality of the workforce. I would like to thank them for all their efforts to get the yard back to work. The yard is addressing a number of legacy issues. Planning and work sequencing have been upgraded. Further improvements in design control and the supply chain will allow many of the barriers to effective working to be removed. We expect physical distancing policies to have an effect on productivity, but anticipate this will improve as the yard adapts to the new working practices. I am pleased to report that several key vacancies have been filled by permanent appointments. These appointments will reinforce the professionalism that Tim Hare, the turnaround director, brings to the job. I've appointed a new board of directors to the business. This new board will provide the leadership required to take the yard into the future. Members bring the diverse range of skills and experience needed to support the turnaround of the business and completion of the ferries. Key to the future is ensuring that there is direct workforce representation to the board. The workforce voice must be heard and listened to. The workforce must be actively involved in discussions as to how this can best be achieved. I have asked the board to establish a workforce liaison committee made up of a cross-section of the workforce. The committee is designed to engage with the board and to encourage the workforce to engage more effectively across the different areas of the company. Trades union representatives can attend each board meeting to address the board on any issues they feel necessary. They will be accompanied by the chair of the workforce liaison committee. This will be a standing item on the agenda. The board's commitment to fair work practices is central to the successful turnaround and future uh, sustainability of the yard. The future of the yard goes beyond the completion of hulls 801 and 802 and management capacity is also be being built to enable a focus on winning new work. Ferguson Marine has received approaches to bid for work. This is an encouraging sign that market confidence in the yard is starting to return to where it should be. The Yard's approach to winning work will be based on their strengths and capabilities. Targeting vessels that are sufficiently complex to optimise capacity and the skills of the workforce. Scottish Ministers are exploring the potential benefits and challenges around the direct award to Ferguson's of future contracts for Scottish Government vessels. A direct award is not a given due to a number of complex legal, financial and structural issues. We are investigating what might be possible, but we're also clear that key to the yard securing work, public sector or otherwise, will be in demonstrating improved efficiency and completing the turnaround that we initiated last year. Presiding officer, this has been a hugely challenging year for the business. In line with much economic activity across Europe, the COVID pandemic has essentially closed the yard for six months. Despite that interruption to business, much has been achieved. The turnaround director has significantly strengthened the senior management team. I've appointed a new board to help drive the business forward. Trade union representatives have direct access to the board and a workers liaison committee is being set up. Vessel design has progressed significantly and the dry dock inspection of 801 demonstrated the paintwork is sound. Work to complete the ferries can now proceed at full speed. I believe we can look uh, to the future of Ferguson's with confidence. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement. I intend to allow around 20 minutes for questions, after which we will move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak buttons now. And I call him Graeme Simpson. <coughs> Thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I thank the uh, Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement? Um, it doesn't really take us very much further on. It doesn't tell us very much new. We still know that the costs for this ferry debacle 
uh, more than uh, around about a thir three times what was forecast originally. The ferries are going to be five years late. It's a shambles. Yep. Now, I understand that COVID-19 has had an impact. Of course it has. And I also express my thanks to the workforce at Ferguson's. They deserve uh, all of our thanks. But the fact is, this is a shambles. Now, what, what the, the statement is interesting for what it says, but it's also interesting for what it doesn't say, because it does not uh, say anything in relation to costs uh, in regard of the story that appeared over the weekend. And that brought forward the suggestion that when the former finance secretary granted a £30 million loan to Ferguson Marine, he knew the shipyard was in financial difficulties and that the loan itself would create a path to nationalisation. But Parliament was told the loan's purpose was to help the shipyard diversify. So can I ask the Cabinet Secretary what did the government know when, when Ferguson Marine was given that loan? What did it know about their financial position when that loan was granted? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I, I thank the member for uh, praising the workforce. It doesn't help the workforce going forward to hear the denigration um, of what's happening. Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I, think in terms, I think in terms of what's happened in the past, the inquiry that is, is taking place in this parliament will address many of the issues that he's raised. But my job as economy secretary, responsible for Ferguson's, is to make sure that they're in a position to go forward, to complete the ferries, to secure the yard, and most importantly, to secure the future of those 350 yeah. workers at the yard and the 350 that I mentioned are part of the supply chain. Now, in terms of openness, um, those who know me and have operated with me as Cabinet Secretary know that I will be as open and as detailed as I can, as will the government. And in terms of the Herald uh, newspaper, the information that they had is not new. It's not any kind of revelation. This Parliament had the information back in December in the detailed report the government had set forward to give the information. Um, I would refer the member, if he wants more information about the loan situation, to look at pages, um, at the, the paragraph 137 of the written statement that the government provided to this Parliament and its committee on the 12th of August. Now, it is not unusual uh, for, uh, you know, for governments to look at taking support uh, for, for businesses, uh, either as an unsecured loan, as they did uh, on the 15 million, or as an secured loan um, on the 30th, uh, for the 30 million. Uh, though that information about those two loans were, were written to, were, were supplied to the Finance Committee and notification, I think, as I recall, on the 24th of April 2018 and on the 27th of June 2018, the Finance Committee uh, could decide themselves whether they wanted to know if they were secured or unsecured. My job, can I get back to the, the update that I've provided, the turnaround director that we uh, appointed has produced uh, a response uh, and also an update to Parliament to ensure that we know what the route forward is for these two important ferries, but most importantly, the improvements that are taking place at the yard that can give us the satisfaction that not only can we deliver these ferries that would never have been produced under the responsibility of the Conservatives, and to make sure... I think it, I think I think I hear I think it was uh, was it South Korea that I think the Conservatives wanted the vessels built in. My job is to make sure the yard has a future, and it would have a stronger future if this Parliament got behind the workforce, made sure they supported them, and made sure that they can support the future work that we want to secure for this yard. I call Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to the Cabinet Secretary for advance sight of her statement. President Officer, this ferry fiasco strikes at the very heart of the incompetence of this government. Contracts were signed in 2015 for these two ferries. We were told by the First Minister then it was a fixed price of £97 million for delivery in 2018. More than four years later, in December 2019, we were told that additional costs to complete the two ferries over and above 
what had already been spent was estimated to be between 110.3 million and 114.3 million, with delivery of one ferry by the end of 2021 and the second by October 2022. Today, we're told there are further costs of 3.3 million, albeit COVID-related, with delivery dates now as late as June 2022 for one ferry and February 2023 for the second. These are COVID-related, but the overall price tag has doubled since this contract was signed, and it is nearly five years late. So for the benefit of any doubt, will the Cabinet Secretary confirm what is the total bill for these two ferries? Not the additional cost, the total cost, and who does she believe is to blame for this fiasco? It's not the workforce, we know that. They should be on the board, not just attending the board meetings. But does this government take any responsibility whatsoever for this scandal? Cabinet Secretary. I thank the member for his support uh, for the workforce. Uh, my responsibility is to come forward with an update to Parliament. We have had a COVID interruption. This is um, of interest to this Parliament and it continues to be. I think it's important that we know what the changes are. There are changes undoubtedly because the yard was closed because of COVID. I don't think that um, uh, the accusation of government for the, the, that disruption is accurate or needed. I've, I've gone through the changes and, and I think the reflection of the improvements that have taken place in the last six months uh, from the, the update that was last provided to the Parliament are, are significant. And that's what I'm reporting on today. We'll let the committee have its inquiry into the past. I'm looking about where the yard is today, but most importantly, where it can be tomorrow. In terms of his, his, his questions on the figures, I also indicated that the change, the figures, the, the, the build figures have not changed in relation to the update from six months ago, that there has been some increases on electrification, but they have been offset by other savings that have been made elsewhere. So I'm confident with the, particularly the project management and indeed um, other is issues that have been introduced by the turnaround director, that we can make sure that these are delivered. The most important thing is to support the communities that are reliant on these ferries. I share his frustration that those communities will have wanted those ferries to be delivered earlier. There have been disputes, and we can understand that, between CMAIL and FMAIL. There were issues as far back um, as February 2016 uh, in terms of some of the, the issues and concerns into relation uh, to, for example, the quarterly report um, from February to April 16 from CMAIL to Transport Scotland, where even then there were seven weeks delayed to the issues of the hull structure drawings by FMAIL. And that also is the bulbous hull that has now been replaced. I've reported on the update of that. That's a significant development. And Graham um, Simpson obviously doesn't know much about shipbuilding. He doesn't realise that the changes in the, the developments that have been taking place in the dry dock over the last six months are significant and they're important to the completion of the ferry. So let's get behind the workforce. I'm sure uh, Mr Smith wants to do that. But let's give them the confidence that they have this parliament behind them in doing so. Stuart Macmillan to be followed by Murdo Fraser. Thank you very much, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, I thank the Cabinet Secretary uh, for the statement and also once again reiterate the thanks of my community and my constituents for saving this yard and saving the jobs in my community, unlike what the Tories and the Labour Party are saying today, thinking it's a waste of money. The Cabinet Secretary in her statement spoke about the 26 apprentices uh, and can the Cabinet Secretary provide some further information uh, in terms of any further apprenticeship schemes that the yard will be looking at and considering for the future? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, one of my, my first appointments as Economy Secretary to, was to visit the yard in February just before lockdown. I was extremely impressed by um, the confidence and support and indeed the importance that the trade union representatives the Met and the workforce had in the apprentices of the future of the yard itself. Um, they set out to recruit 24 apprentices this year in several of the trades in the shipyard. The calibre of the candidates was excellent and they've expanded the programme to add two extra apprentices on a technician route intended to take them into the engineering department at the end of their apprenticeship, bringing the total to 26 that I referred to in my statement. Next year, um, they hope to be able to expand the programme to offer graduate apprenticeships. Murdo Fraser to be followed by Kenneth Gibson. Uh, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. Uh, Jim McCall, still an economic advisor to this Scottish Government, yep. has predicted that the total cost of delivering these two ferries will exceed £300 million. Yep. If he is proven right, will the Cabinet Secretary resign? Cabinet Secretary. Well, 
you know, these projection, predictions, I'm not sure the predictions um, are as accurate, I mean, uh, as the, the well-meaning Mr. McCall will have set out, I'm sure. But in relation to those predictions, that is nowhere near where we are. And I think it's an exaggeration. I think it's an exaggeration. I think it's an exaggeration um, to try and um, impose a prediction uh, when I've just given you the statement that talks about efficiencies, that talks about, despite the fact of God, the pressures within, that the yard is on focus uh, and on a mission to be able to complete those ferries in a far more efficient and productive manner than there had been previously. Project management, I'm sure those that have visited the yard was an issue. Uh, design that took place on concept design, not the basic detail design, will have cost money. So indeed, we all know that the costs had increased. There's reasons for that. Uh, we can see that between build on uh, concept design rather than basic design. We've seen that in relation to the need to have replaced the bulbous bow. Um, indeed, the ordering and sequencing of some of the project will have cost money in the past. That is not the way forward. The way forward is as I've set out as to how that update report that you have now received and that Parliament can study can show the improvements that have taken place even in the last six months as a result of the, the, the implementation um, of the, the, the plans put forward by our turnaround and director. I have confidence in that. I hope the, the, the Parliament can have. I understand scepticism from what's gone before, but my job is to make sure that they can go forward and go forward with confidence. Kenneth Gibson to be followed by Rhoda Glant. I welcome the Cabinet Secretary's update, Presiding Officer, but it's clear that had the Tory internal market been in place, Ferguson Marine and indeed Prestwick Airport would no longer be in business due to the loss of this Parliament of state aid powers. My armed constituents are keen to know when the Glen Sanex will not just be delivered, but begin serving their Dross and Tobrodic route. Can the, Minister, can the Cabinet Secretary please advise? Cabinet Secretary. Um, the delivery of the MV Glen Sanex is now planned for a date in the range of April 2022 to June 2022 and will sail on the Adrosan to Roddick route. Um, obviously, as the members know, that, that also then relieves pressure um, elsewhere. It is important that uh, we support uh, that uh, development and I know the importance of reliable ferries but also in terms of the uh, tourism that we need to get back on track that we need to make sure that we've got the ferries delivered on time etc uh, but also uh, to make sure we can never forget that the ferries are there obviously the, the work is supporting the yard and the jobs are referred to but the purpose of these ferries is to support our communities our island communities and I want to make sure that Aaron with its very vibrant um, uh, uh, economy based on tourism can return uh, with the support of obviously the new ferry but also the support that I know that's been taken forward by Fergus Ewing and the Tourism Task Force. Rhoda Grant to be followed by John Finney. Um, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, the workforce have already been badly let down by the Scottish Government so can she guarantee to protect the jobs and apprenticeships she talked about in her statement. Also, in the interest of transparency, will she come clean on the total cost of these ferries? And given the length of time communities have had to wait for them, will she now start planning the renewal of the rest of the fleet? Cabinet Secretary. I, I think that's a, a very important uh, uh, question. Uh, I know my colleague Paul Wheelhouse is looking at the development of, of, of the future ferry services and that's an important about going forward and looking to the future. In terms of the costs, I've given the update today in relation to that uh, cost envelope hasn't changed and so we'll be holding um, the art account on that. And in relation to her points on jobs, uh, actually there have been an increase in number of people employed at the yard as detailed in the update report I've published today, which again I think gives confidence that there's a, a future there. And as far as skills are concerned, I reported about uh, the, the uh, view of the yard that they want to be able to uh, increase the number of apprentices or particularly graduate apprentices as well as the apprentices they have. So uh, those, I hope, will be reassuring uh, explanations to, to the member, and I appreciate the questions she's asked. John Finney, to be followed by Willie Rennie. Yeah, thank you, President Officer, um, and I thank the Cabinet Secretary for early sight of uh, her statement. But, of course, to my constituents, awaiting uh, many uh, replacement ferries, this is just more words. Of course, I appreciate the efforts of the workforce. In preparation for the uh, REC Committee's work on this tomorrow, Spife produced a briefing, and I quote from it, it's worth noting that loans provided by the Scottish Government to Ferguson Marine were not contractually linked to the ferry contract, as Scottish ministers were not party to the vessel's contract or directly involved in the contract dispute. We're also told that CMAL didn't know, but of course ministers are responsible 
uh, an account for public money and governance. The political oversight is the flaw in this whole sorry saga. So can the Cabinet Secretary advise, given that the delivery milestones were clearly not met, where the loan funding was spent? Cabinet Secretary. The, uh, the, the first set of loan funding, and again, I would refer um, the member if he hasn't had a chance to read it, and I'm sure all members of the committee will have read the written statement uh, pub published on the 12th of August and sent to uh, the committee, uh, paragraphs 137 onwards, talk about the commercial loans. Uh, the first commercial loans were to provide working capital uh, to ensure as an account managed uh, company there was support uh, for the continuing work. He will also know, having studied this, there were serious issues about cash flow uh, for the company. Paragraphs 139 and 140 set out uh, what the different loans were for. The second loan uh, was to ensure the stabilisation of the company, but also the development of the, the yard and to enable that diversification uh, into other contracts and markets that we'd want to see. And that's why, uh, in terms of the explanations. The full explanation is provided in the written statement that was provided to the committee. I would remind uh, the, the, the Chamber that the statement today is actually about the future and what's happened in the last six months, uh, but obviously there's an ongoing committee inquiry to which the member refers. Willie Rennie to be followed by Alistair Allen. Yeah, I'm sure the Minister accepts that it is reasonable to ask questions about what is now a four-year delay to two ferries and the impact on long-suffering passengers as well. The government orchestrated the ownership of this yard on two separate occasions. And I know the minister doesn't want to look back, but what lessons has she learned for the future from this episode of this over budget, delayed construction and passengers waiting even longer? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, can I say I absolutely agree that there are lessons to be learned and, and that is why actually we welcome the inquiry that's taking place which is looking about uh, the situation and how it developed. Uh, some of the issues that in coming into post at this stage I can reflect on, uh, certainly there are issues around governance undoubtedly and I'm sure the committee will make recommendations as part of their inquiry. Um, I've ensured in terms of uh, the public nature of the, uh, of the Ferguson's uh, Marine that Port Glasgow is that it needs governance of uh, the nature that has a board. I've appointed that board uh, since coming into post that they are in place. I think some of the issues of MD who's uh, visited the yard, I think many of the members particularly the REC committee, have visited the yard, the out of sequencing of some of the work and the points I referred to previously about uh, build being uh, produced potentially to, to meet milestones and therefore cash flow payments. We know cash flow payments were an issue. Doing that on conceptual design, not on basic detail design, is an issue um, that should be looked at as well. So there are a number of issues around this, undoubtedly. But I hope, um, you know, as I've said in my update report, that we can focus on where the yard goes next. But I think in terms of accountability, that is what this parliament is about. And that's why I think the inquiry that's taking place, uh, I think if it can give perspective, if it can give recommendations on some of these areas, there will be lessons learned on it. But I think it's mo most important that we reflect that we have saved the yard, we have saved the jobs, and we're making sure those ferries will be built. And in other circumstances, had we taken different decisions, there would be no yard, there would be no jobs, and those ferries would still not have been built. Alistair Allen to be followed by Jamie Green. As the Cabinet Secretary appreciates, the delays to uh, vessel 802 at Ferguson's have been a source of frustration, if I may put it so understatedly as that, to my constituents in Harris and Uist. Uh, this vessel will be very welcome indeed, um, although she will not, as the Cabinet Secretary will appreciate, of herself solve CalMAC's capacity problems. Can the Cabinet Secretary say more about the Government's ferry procurement intentions beyond the two vessels currently building at Ferguson's? Cabinet Secretary. Um, um, my colleague Paul Wheelhouse, uh, I understand, will say more of, of about this to the committee uh, tomorrow and the, the member will have an interest in that clearly. Um, we obviously know about the, the impact of the delays in delivery of the ferries on communities and I've re referenced that previously. And of course the CalMAC crews operating the existing fleet. Uh, and that's a point that Mr Wheelhouse uh, discussed with the unions only last week. Uh, we continue to mitigate this with investment in fleet resilience. I think the members will uh, be aware that that's been reported on several times already to this parliament. 
through the funds we've made available. And I would reiterate that CMAL uh, continues its search on the open market uh, for any new second-hand tonnage that may become um, available. In addition to this, we're progressing with further investment plans in fleet replacement, such as the new Isla, uh, Isla uh, vessel expected to go to tender early next year. And work is ongoing on replacements through the vessel replacement and deployment plan, which, as I said, uh, Mr. Wilhouse uh, is responsible for. Thank you. Jamie Green to be followed uh, by Maureen Watt. Uh, thank you, President. Also, we know that the reality is that Scotland needs at least a dozen new vessels to service our island communities. Uh, given that the first two are already nearly five years late, what confidence can our island communities have that this government will deliver a pipeline of new ferries? And can I, since the SNP government took ownership of the yard, how many new contracts it signed? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, clearly the yard has d delivered um, on the ferries uh, and indeed the vessels that they've been contracted to deliver on. As I said in my uh, statement, they have also been, they've also been approached for new work, which is, they've also been approached for new work, um, as I've said as well. In terms of the new vessels and the demand, that's an issue that, as I said, my colleague uh, uh, Paul Wheelhouse is taking forward as part of the vessel replacement and deployment plan. As far as lessons are concerned, I think that's one of the issues around standardisation. Uh, that's certainly something that's come through very loud and clear in all the evidence that I've seen, and that would um, help in some of the future procurement and in some of the future vessel areas. We can think about whether we uh, embark on direct uh, you know, procurement. There are issues around that. One of the issues that we've been absolutely consistent on throughout this is to make sure in whatever shape or form the ownership of the uh, yard has been that we are state aid compliant. And that applies to uh, publicly owned companies as it does in relation to other ownership models as well. But the, the, the member makes uh, very important points and that's part of how we need to plan our futures to make sure we have the ferries that are required. And I think a standardised design and other uh, lessons that can be learned from the past will help in the future. More in what to be followed by Neil Bibby. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary will know that under previous management, the materials were stored off-site in very poor conditions and unmanned. Can the Cabinet Secretary uh, tell the Chamber uh, how the re relocation of the stock is going, whether the infantry is in place and that new stock control procedures are in place? Cabinet Secretary. Again, uh, I think the member is reflecting on some of the concerns of what's happened before. There were some very serious concerns about the state of um, the, the uh, inventory and where it was being held. Uh, there was obviously an inspection of the inventory had started prior to lockdown under COVID. It was considered that this was not essential um, during the period of COVID. It, that ha it has now restarted. And again, the update I provided today gives you information about that. But it's very important that they're in a... The, the inventory is secured in an improved state and also, as the member has pointed out, there's improved and better stock control than previously had happened. And I think this order and this project management approach and make sure it's systemised will help in the delivery and the efficiency changes that I've uh, discussed and are detailed in the update report published today. Neil Bibby to be followed by Stuart Stevenson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. This is a long-running saga. One lesson we should have already learned is that meaningful engagement with the workforce has been key to the transition to public ownership and to finally making some progress with the vessels. The Interim Board had worker representation, but GMB Scotland were very disappointed that the Cabinet Secretary's first act was to remove worker representation from the Board. A workforce liaison committee is a blatant attempt to go round union representation. Has the Cabinet Secretary's proposals for the Board been negotiated with the recognised trade unions, or is the Government simply imposing their preferred way to, for workers to be represented? Aren't those workers entitled to full Board membership and to decide who represents them on the Board? Cabinet Secretary. Um, the member, I think, is confusing the Project Review Board with the Board of Governance that I've established. The Project Review Board was brought in deliberately uh, to ensure that we could plot the way forward uh, and to make sure that there was a plan uh, for when the turnaround director uh, was taken, making the changes that I've just gone through and have just been updated to Parliament. Can I say that the trade unions have been very supportive of the approach of, of the uh, turnaround director in what's happened over the last six months. Uh, when I met the, trade union, uh, the local trade union representatives 
in February at the Yard. They were also pleased with the direction and travel. I have also spoken to the local trade union representatives and the GMB on the 9th of July to explain the process of what will be happening with the new board, of, uh, uh, you know, board and governance terms. Uh, were trade union members to be members of the board. They would also then have the responsibilities and fiduciary responsibilities that would be involved and the liabilities concerned. The trade union representatives, um, as, a, as, um, uh, you know, as endorsed by the local workforce, will be attending each meeting of the board to raise any issues they want raised in addition to the Workforce Liaison Committee, which will embrace a wider group um, of workers at the yard, not just those that are the workforce um, on, the, on the yard itself. They may be, depending on the choice of the, the workforce, the same people in relation to trade union membership uh, or otherwise. So I will continue that productive relationship with them, and I hope in explaining uh, the difference between the Project Review Board and the Board of Governors uh, that I've just, um, uh, the, the Board of Directors for Governance Purposes, I've just laid out that that satisfies the member and his inquiry. Final question from Stuart Stevenson. As someone who uh, project directed his first multi million pound project, one of many, some 40 years ago, I note that uh, inadequate project management appears to have been a primary factor leading to the commercial failure at Ferguson Marine. What steps can be taken to minimise the chance of such difficulties arriving again? And indeed, uh, what lessons in relation to project management are there for other civil engineering and engineering general projects placed by the government? Government Secretary. Uh, obviously, the ongoing committee inquiry will look at different issues, including project management. I've, uh, I think it's correct to draw attention to that, that issue. Um, Ferguson has contracted a team of uh, specialist uh, planners from Alliance Project Controls to upgrade Ferguson Marine's planning systems, introduce proper project planning and controls, and work as part of the Ferguson team. Significant progress has been made and the Yard will implement the new planning regime in September 2020. Introduction of project management systems is well underway and credible monthly reports are now being produced. Uh, at Ferguson's, an extensive business process improvement is underway. There are seven disparate systems required to run the business and the system integration task is a major challenge. A head of business improvement has been appointed to lead the implementation of the inventory control system I referred to in relation to Maureen Watts' uh, question and other key change projects. Process mapping is underway, designed to provide an effective quality, uh, quality management system with clear and understandable business processes. And I'm sure that all Scottish businesses could learn uh, lessons from Ferguson's approach and what they've managed to do in the last few months. Thank you very much. That concludes uh, questions on the statement and we will move on shortly to the next item of business. <laughs>